welcome to All Saints Church in St. Andrews. It's so nice to have you with us today for this time of worship, whether you're joining us on CHCO TV or on our YouTube channel. Sunday School has begun by Zoom, and if you'd like to be on the list of those receiving emails to join us uh, for Sunday School, please call our parish office at 506-529-8662. Sunday services are at 11 o'clock here in All Saints Church each Sunday, and you're more than welcome to join us uh, for that uh, time of worship. This Sunday will be Holy Communion, and the preacher will be uh, Bob Cheatley, ordination candidate for this diocese. Please join me in an opening hymn of praise, which we will read. It's uh, by John Wesley. Christ, whose glory fills the skies. Christ, Christ the true and only light. light. Son of righteousness, arise. Triumph o'er the shades of night. Day spring from on high be near. Day star in my heart appear. Visit then this soul of mine. Pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me, radiancy divine. Scatter all my unbelief, more and more thyself display, shining to the perfect day. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. The hour cometh and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God in the words of the general confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have, have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We, have we have followed too much, much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have, we have offended, offended against thy holy laws. laws. We, we have, have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance, and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that at the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And thou now shalt show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Please join me in reading the Vanity. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 146, and we will read it responsively by the half verse. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, yea as long as I have any being, I will I sing praises unto my God. God. O put not your trust in princes, nor in any child of man, 
for there is is no help help in them. For when the breath of man goeth forth, he shall turn it again to his earth, and And then all his thoughts perish. Blessed is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, and and whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, who keepeth his promise forever, who helpeth them to right the suffer wrong, who feedeth the hungry. The Lord looseth men out of prison. The Lord giveth sight to the blind. The Lord raiseth up them that are fallen. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord careth for strangers. He upholdeth the fatherless and widow. As for the ways of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God, O Zion, shall be king forevermore. And throughout all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. Amen. John will now read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the Epistle to the Ephesians, third chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge." that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through it all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our response to the first lesson is the Serge Illuminare. Please join me in reading this canticle. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down to the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting or destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Reverend James Crichton will now read the second lesson. The second lesson is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. Here endeth the lesson. Please join me in reading the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies 
and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive them that trespass, trespass against us. Against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take, and take not thy, thy Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit from us. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church, and because it cannot continue in safety without thy succor, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's sermon will be brought to us by Bob Cheatley, who is a candidate for ordination to the diaconate. His ordination is going to happen on All Saints Day. November 1st of this year. Thank you, John. From the Gospel, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And from our epistle, that you may know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of the widow of Nain is one that only St. Luke tells in his gospel account. Jesus is traveling with his disciples and many followers, and they enter a village where a funeral procession is in progress. It was a funeral attended by a considerable crowd, likely with paid mourners setting the tone for the funeral cortege with weeping and wailing. 
Jesus is not distracted by this, but he focuses directly on the widow who has just lost her only son. As a woman without a husband or a son, she would be destitute. When Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. What he does next is remarkable. He walks over to the bier, which is a kind of frame that a corpse covered with a shroud is transported. When Jesus touches the bier, he commands, young man, I say to you, arise. Instantly, he started to speak and Jesus restores him to his mother. In the gospels, Jesus raises three different people from the dead, Jairus' daughter, the only son of the widow of Nain, and his good friend, Lazarus. On other occasions, he heals people who were extremely ill and on the verge of death, such as the centurion's servant. Jesus' healing ministry included de deliverance from evil spirits, healing of infirmities, rescues from death, and the restoration of life to at least these three people who had died. In the instance of the widow of Nain, Jesus knew her plight and had compassion on her. Out of his great love, he gave life to her son so that both he and his mother would have another chance at life. The crowds in Nain said that a great prophet had arisen. They may have been thinking about the great prophet Elijah, who was expected to return and who had during his life also raised a widow's son from death. The restoration of life is not resurrection. Only Jesus has been resurrected to eternal life in a new spiritual body. And the resurrection of God's people is still to come. The son of the widow of Nain was raised to life, but he would die again someday. He was awakened from death as if he was asleep and their lives were given a second chance. Our God is a God of second chances. Whatever the state of their relationship to God was before, there is little doubt that they would believe that Jesus was sent by God and they would trust in him. Our epistle is a prayer by St. Paul for the people of Ephesus. He writes to them as his partners in the gospel through whom many people who were once dead to sin were made alive to Christ by the grace of God and brought to salvation and to eternal life. Ephesus was a great city of many Gentiles. Chapter 19 of the book of Acts tells us it was the city of Artemis of the Ephesians, a place where silver, sil rather silver idols of the Greek deity Artemis were made and sold throughout all Asia. This was a lucrative trade that Paul disrupted while he lived and he ministered in Ephesus for three years. We are told that many Jews and Greeks throughout Asia came to hear the word of the Lord through Paul's preaching. These were a people that were dead in their sins, not knowing the truth about God until Paul was sent to them. Now, in his letter to the Ephesians, he is a prisoner, he's a prisoner in chains for the sake of the gospel. He writes to the Ephesians, whom he has helped to come to know Christ, both Jews and Gentiles, and he gives thanks for them. What follows is a remarkable prayer. It is one that we can read in context as Paul's supplication for the people of Ephesus. It is also one that we may appropriate for ourselves and for others today for the same, very same reason that Paul wrote to them. 20 years ago, a friend told me that he had prayed this prayer every day for his brother who did not know Jesus and was living a life far away, a, a lifestyle that was far away from Christ. He inserted his brother's name into the prayer which he made daily. Years later, his brother turned from his ways and he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. It remained my friend's prayer for the rest of his life. 
So listen to this again, and perhaps you might make it a prayer for yourself or for someone. Paul begins, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, or I, or insert the name of someone, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And I pause here. This is a prayer that Paul makes on his knees, prostrated before the Lord. Normally, Jews would stand to their feet to pray, but this is a prayer made in such earnest sincerity. He acknowledges that the whole human family, those alive and those who have gone before, owe their being to God the Father, who is incomprehensibly rich in all good things. He gives us power through his Holy Spirit in our inner being. This is a grace that comes only from God the Father through faith in Christ so that we live in his power that defeats death. When we accept Jesus by faith, we receive his indwelling spirit so that God may be at work in our lives, healing us and transforming us from the inside out. As St. Paul writes in his epistle to the Romans in chapter six, we die to sin so that we may be alive to Christ. This is something that each one of us must appropriate for ourselves. We can pray that God will change our hearts or open, or open the hearts of others to the gospel, but each one of us must appropriate it for ourselves. It begins by putting our faith in Jesus, and then there is so much more because of the richness of God. The prayer continues by imploring the Father that we may be rooted and grounded in love. The Father is love, and our lives will be lives of love if we grow in him. Paul's prayer is that Christ and the love of Christ will grow in our hearts. Paul's next supplication is for understanding or comprehension, something that comes through the strengthening power of the Holy Spirit so that we may grasp with all the saints the enormity of the love of Christ. His heart is big in its breadth and length and height and depth, and it reaches to all people everywhere. The prayer is that we will appropriate it, not just in our heads, but that we will come to an understanding that passes or surpasses knowledge that we receive it in our hearts. The love of God is a matter of the heart. A dear old professor at St. Stephen's University used to say that our goal is to become people with thinking hearts and feeling minds, where all is given to Christ. We need to go past a superficial understanding to a knowledge of Christ that goes from head to heart and changes us from the inside out. The prayer of Paul continues as follows. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is one of the richest prayers in the Bible, and it ends with praise to the one who can do more than we can ever imagine, whose ability is limitless to transform things in our lives that we could never change or heal on our own. The more of our life that we open to the Holy Spirit, the more God is able to work within us and to make us more like him. Just as the widow's son, who was dead and was made alive, we too are made alive to Christ through faith and receive power to change through the indwelling Holy Spirit. 
May it be so for each one and for all of us. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy on us. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For David, our bishop, and for all the clergy and all who minister, both lay and ordained, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For Elizabeth, our queen, Justin and Blaine, her first ministers, John, our member of parliament, and Kathy, our member of the legislature-elect, Douglas, our mayor, and for the leaders of all nations and communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, for seasonable weather, and for an abundance of harvest, both of land and sea, for those suffering the effects of natural disasters, especially those in the path of hurricanes and storms, and those whose lives and property are in danger because of forest fires. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on us. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, for those on our parish prayer list, and for those whose needs are known to God alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy on us. For those suffering the effects of COVID-19 and other communicable diseases, for those working to find cures and vaccines, for those providing essential goods and services during the pandemic, for those working in occupations of danger, first responders, staff in hospitals and nursing homes, home care workers, retail workers, teachers and other school staff, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for those persecuted for their faith or for any reason, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For our family, friends, and neighbors, including those celebrating birthdays this week, Jim, Ethan, Gethin, Jim, Sam, and Marcel, that they may have much good health and happiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Isabel Parker, John Turner, John Eldridge, and Blair Price, that we may end our lives in faith and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew and St. John the Baptist, our patrons, St. Michael and all angels, Jerome and Remigius, whom we remember this week, and with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Grant, Grant these in all our prayers, O Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in this wonderful prayer of thanksgiving from the First American Prayer Book of 1789. To our prayers, O Lord, we, we join, join our, our unfaded thanks for all, all thy mercies, for our, our being, our reason, and, and all other endowments and faculties of soul and body, for our health, friends, food, and raiment, and all the other comforts and conveniences of life. Above all, we adore thy mercy in sending thy only Son into the world to redeem us from sin and eternal death and in giving us the knowledge and sense of our duty towards thee. We bless thee for thy patience with us, notwithstanding our many and great provocations, for all the directions, assistances, and comforts of thy Holy Spirit, for thy continual care and watchful providence over us through the whole course of our lives, and particularly for the mercies and benefits of the past week, beseeching thee to continue these thy blessings to us, and to give us grace to show our thankfulness in a sincere obedience to his laws, through whose merits and intercessions we receive them all, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of, of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, and, and the, the love of God, and, God, and the, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today, and hope you have a wonderful week. Hope to be with you again next week.